What's up everybody, Garrett back here, and I want to bring back the first episode for the new season of Rad Recommendations. My Rad Recommendations is a series that I do where I take a movie that I like and someone else in this community likes as well, and what we do is we talk about that movie and try to convince you guys to either check it out or give it another chance. Now throughout November, I'm going to have a bunch of different Rad Recommendation episodes with other people from this community for season two, but... I wanted to use the first episode to do on my own right now because not only could I not find anybody that really knew much about this movie, really loves it like I do, and I know Halloween is getting close, but I'm hoping that maybe this is something that you guys can check out this Halloween season. All right, the movie I'm going to talk about today is 1989's Night Visitor. Night Visitor. Now, this was actually a blind buy for me probably maybe about a year ago, I'm going to say. Um, I had never heard of this movie before. I never owned this movie before. It did have a DVD from MGM, but I never owned it. So I ended up picking this up from Scorpion. Now, one of the reasons I did was because this cover right here was super cool. Um, I looked it up and it was an 80s horror movie. And with the track record of Scorpion, their Blu-rays seem to go out of print relatively fast. So between all three of those things, I thought this was something I definitely had to give a try. Now again, the cover art for this really drew me in. Um, this is a really cool looking cover here. I checked out the trailer online and man, it kind of had me from there. Um, you guys can check out the trailer. I don't know if it's gonna do it enough justice, but I'm gonna go to bat for this movie, especially if you haven't seen it. Um, the Night Visitor is a really, really 80s cheese. Um, you know, you may watch it and be like, oh, that was stupid, but I find it just works really, really well. To me, again, this came out in 1989. I'm going to say I would look at this as the younger brother to Fright Night. Now, in my opinion, Fright Night is one of those movies that I find to be a masterpiece in the horror genre. I just think it's everything done right. There's nothing really about Fright Night that I would change. Um, I was always drawn to those type of stories where you live in kind of a suburb neighborhood and you suspect something about your neighbor. I know Disturbier did a similar situation like that, but I was always a big fan of Fright Night. If you check out an old, old video I did, one of my first videos I did, um, I talk about my experience with Fright Night and show you different things from my collection when it comes to Fright Night and basically how I came across that movie. That was one of the gateway movies for me to get into the horror genre. In the same vein, I was a big fan of Are You Afraid of the Dark? And there was this one episode called The Nightly Neighbors where it had to do with vampires living next door and the kids were trying to figure out if they were vampires or not. Like That to me really just resonates because I lived in those type of areas, the suburbs, um, big neighborhoods where you, know, you knew all your neighbors. And hey, if any of them had dark secrets, you never knew, but I just really liked this kind of stuff. Uh, Summer of 84 is a very similar situation as well. And the fact that I had not heard about this movie that came out in 1989 called Night Visitor really just intrigued me. So really quick, I want to go through the movie, but I want to do it as spoiler-free as possible because I want you guys to definitely check this out. Now, like I said, Scorpion released this Blu-ray. This is the only way to get this on Blu-ray. And I got it from Ronan Flicks, who also has a little bit of a deal with Scorpion, where they release a lot of their titles. So I wanted to make this now because I just looked before I did this video, and there's only 60 copies left on Ronan Flicks' website. Now, like I said before, once these Scorpion releases are out, they're usually gone. So even if you're on the fence, I highly recommend jumping over to Ronan Flick's website and grabbing Night Visitor before it is long gone. So speaking of Fright Night, what this is, is this is again, it's a suburb. Um, there's teenagers here. There's one main teenager, Billy Colton, who's played by Derek Rydell, which you might know from Phantom of the Mall, which is another movie that we're going to be getting a great addition from Arrow coming up soon, which I'm looking forward to. And there's a girl that he kind of likes, and he has a best friend. And the best friend is him is Sam Loomis, believe it or not. So, again, was that done on purpose? Uh, I assume so. I am, I'm hoping that wasn't a happy accident. But, yeah, his friend is Sam Loomis. So, again, it kind of reminds me of Fright Night where you have Charlie and then Amy and then his friend, Evil Ed. So, the main character, Billy, he gets a new next-door neighbor played by Shannon Tweed who you may know as Gene Simmons' his wife, who's been in a bunch of 80s movies. She's the next door neighbor in this film. And he kind of has a little bit of a crush on her. And he kind of spies on her through the window. And, you know, there's some flirtation back and forth between him and her. And come to find out, he thinks that she's a prostitute based on some of the things he's seen looking out his window. So to add to it, there's a satanic serial killer that's going on around the town. And he kind of has an idea based on some of the things he's seen of who it is. 
Now, he also hires a detective to help him out, which in my eyes seems very much like a Malcolm McDowell type character. Not over the top like Malcolm McDowell was, but just the idea that he hires an investigator to help him solve this case. Me and one of the other main characters of this movie is Michael Pollard. Rest in peace. Michael Pollard was in a lot of old movies, but what I remember him in is House of a Thousand Corpses, where at the beginning at Captain Spaulding's, he's that little guy that was in the bathroom when they got robbed and he was super funny. Well, basically, he plays the exact same character in this movie here. I'm not sure if that character from this movie is how he kind of plays all his roles, but to me, the character that he played here was the exact character that we saw in House of a Thousand Corpses. Now, the rest of this movie really takes place with him and his friends trying to really just solve this case of who the satanic serial killer is. So it's really, really cool. Again, there's a lot I can say, but I really don't want to spoil it. But that's the brief summary of the movie. I hope I've won you guys over enough because I don't want to spoil anymore. Um, again, it's not as well polished as A Fright Night. It's a lot cheesier, but it's under the same premise and it's just really fun. It's, like I said, super 80s cheese. Um, this is something that I think would go really well with a lot of the 80s horror classics, and I'm surprised this isn't something that gets talked about way more often. Now, like I said before, I love this cover art, and I've actually been looking for a theatrical poster of this image that I think would be a great addition to my collection. But sadly enough, this was more of like a video cassette release poster, so the sizing just isn't right to any of the posters I have in the house. Um, sadly, the main theatrical poster that I can get is actually really terrible artwork. It does this movie no justice. But this movie was also originally called Never Cry Devil, which, again, I find maybe is a cooler title based on what this movie is about than Night Visitor. But not only is this a real fun, cool movie, um, but the soundtrack here is awesome. It's got a lot of 80s style hair metal and ballads. And man, it's got some great stuff in here. I don't know if there is a soundtrack for this movie, but if there is, I definitely want to check it out. So if you want to know two of the main songs on the soundtrack, check it out on YouTube. It's Never Cry Devil by Willie DeVille, and This Is The Love by Eric Troyer. Those are the two that I found online, and they're fantastic. They're like the two main songs of this movie, and I definitely recommend checking them out now, just to get an idea of what the tone of this movie is, and to see if that helps win you over as well. But again, guys, I'm going to make this as spoiler-free as possible, especially because it's just me talking about it. When I usually do these episodes, we spoil pretty heavy uh, when I'm interacting with somebody else. But again, I want you guys to track this thing down. I don't know if it's streaming. If it is, please give it a try. If you believe me already, go to Ronin Flicks and grab this while you can. Because like I said, when I checked earlier today, there's only 60 of these remaining. So again, I would definitely try to swipe these things while they're still available. Now, if you've seen this flick... Post down below in the comments what you think. Are you a fan of it? Do you feel this is super underrated? Why is nobody ever talking about this movie? If you didn't like this movie, let me know too. And if you're not already following me on social media, follow at Born to Be Rad on Instagram. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe down below. I had a bunch of content that I did in October. I have a bunch more coming by the end of this month. So stay tuned. Hit that bell notification to let you know when a new video is up. Give this video a thumbs up. It'll really, really help out. I appreciate all the new subscribers I have, all the old subscribers that have, been, that have been here since day one. Truly appreciate you guys. Again, that's why I like doing these rad recommendations. I want to give you guys some titles that maybe you haven't heard of that are worth seeking out. So again, this is Garrett at Born to be Rad, and like always, stay rad. <laughs>